the hundred thousand songs of milarepa volume 2 is being continued the chapter the challenge from the logicians is being continued dharlo then said i asked you in the language of dharma but you did not answer my question in buddhist terms instead you have sung a deceptive song to cheat gullible folk who cannot sing this kind of trash who cannot sing this kind of trash your song may deceive fools but never me if you cannot answer my questions today with scholastic language in buddhist terms of academic tradition but shamelessly still intend to receive alms from people with your deceiving songs you well deserve to be trampled down saying this he seized a handful of earth and threw it in the jetson's face the jetson brushed it off smiled at him and said how can you the scholar who adheres to words and books merely for the sake of the pleasures of this life act in accordance with the dharma driven by your powerful karmas and sins all your learning and priestly disciple disi disciplines will only bring you more unhappiness as i understand them all dharmas are remedies for human passions and desires but the way in which you practice them will only increase your passions and desires therefore my dharma and yours are completely different and contradictory since we do not speak the same language nor believe the same principle how can we find a common base from which to discuss the dharma now seeing all these things rechungpa thought to himself although i am not worthy even to match a single hair of my guru's head if i do not beat this sinner who is now trying to hurt the jetson i shall then violate the samaya commandment tantric precept but if i punish him i will create great merit he then picked up a stick and rushed towards the priest was about to strike him at once the jetson caught his arm saying rechungpa my son the wealth that cannot be used when one is in want the kinsmen who do not assist when one is in need and the dharma that cannot help when one is under adverse conditions will only make one more miserable you should control yourself and try hard to think of the admonishments i shall now sing a song to awaken your good thoughts and awareness i bow down to marpa my gracious guru and my glory the great jetsang the shelter of all beings i pray you save us from doing evil deeds o rechungpa my son calm yourself and listen to me those hypocritical buddhists who talk big become commoners at once when they meet with adverse conditions because their intentions are evil from wrong doings they will always suffer if you ever fight with people you violate the precepts through and through calm yourself my son and listen to your guru in the vast firmament of the peerless dharma my eagle child of awareness learns to fly but never should he pride himself on his flying power lest he fall into the sectarian abyss Rechungpa, listen to your Guru's words. In the great ocean of the Dharma practice, my fish child of awareness learns to swim, but never should he pride himself on his power of swimming, lest he fall into the net of confusion. Rechungpa, listen to your Guru's words. On the snow mountain of Dharma actions, my lion child of awareness learns to fight, but he should never pride himself on his fighting power lest he be lost in the snowstorm of desires rechungpa listen to your guru's words in the precious land of dharma accomplishment my child of awareness learns to trade but never should he trade with sureness lest he lose the great pearl of dharma essence rechungpa listen to your god's guru's words and try to keep your temper lest you be scorched by anger rechungpa discipline yourself and quench your passions hearing the jetsang's song rechungpa calmed down the patrons in the assembly all blamed the scholar priests rechungpa was also slightly criticized for his outburst after this incident the patrons were all confirmed with a deeper faith 
than ever in Milarepa. It was the scholar priests who first had the intention of slandering the Jatsang, but in doing so, they had only disgraced and discredited themselves. Being frustrated and humiliated, Dharlo, Loden and some other monks again went to the Jatsang on the following day to seek revenge. They brought much meat and many books with them. When they arrived, they asked permission to see the Jatsang in order to apologize for their conduct of the day before. Rechungpa said, There is no need for apology nor for further debate and there is no necessity for you to meet the Jatsang. While Rechungpa was trying to stop them, some other disciples slipped into the Jatsang's room and besought him to see the priests. He said very kindly, the best thing is not to do any wrong, but if you have and can repeat and can repent of it with sincerity afterwards, this is also very good. Now, let the scholar priests come in and talk to me. Thus, he accepted the interview. The priests then offered the meat and said, Yesterday, you were in the right. We regret what we did. In apology, we offer you this meat using these books as frames of reference for judgment, let us now discuss the Buddhist teachings in a friendly manner. The Jatsang replied, Dear teachers, the proverb says, Judging from the complexion of the face, one knows whether the man has eaten or not. In the same light, the fact that one knows or knows not the Dharma can easily be detected by whether or not he can conquer his own ego-clinging desires. If he can, that proves he knows and also practices the Buddhist teachings. One may be very eloquent in talking about the Dharma and win all the debates. But if he cannot subdue even a fraction of his own ego clinging and desires, but merely indulges himself in words and talk, his victories in debates will never bring him any profit but will only increase his egotism and pride. This is the cause of wandering forever in samsara and falling to the bottom of hell. Therefore, as I can see, all this argumentation is harmful and destructive. Your apology for your misconduct yesterday is very good indeed. Now we have finished our discussion and you may return to your home. Dharlo then said, Only Buddha can say whether one has conquered his ego clinging and desires. One may not be able to subdue his ego clinging, but that does not mean his knowledge about Buddhism and eloquence in debate condemns him to fall into hell and wander in samsara forever. To say that is to say knowledge and learning are sinful. One may claim that, claim that scholarship itself is a great sin, but this will not absolve him from his conceit of being virtuous nor protect him from doing the wrong thing even with the right intention. This perhaps will cause his direct fall to the bottom of hell. Therefore, it is of great importance to learn well and to distinguish what is right and what is wrong. From these reasons, we must discuss the Buddhist teachings. Since I am familiar with the rules and manners of conducting a debate, I suggest that you choose a topic in which you are well versed and propound a propose proposition in its light. We will then evaluate it and give you our give you our opinion. On the other hand, if you think that we are not well-learned scholars, you may ask us any question you like and we will try to answer it. The Jatsang replied, If you must insist, I have no other choice. Both of us are known to the people here. They have heard of us, see, uh, see us and know us well. I shall now take up a topic beyond both erudition and ignorance. I will ask you some questions. Also, I will propound my proposition on Buddhist teachings. Now please answer me. Is space obstructing or non-obstructing? The scholar replied, No one would ever ask this kind of question. But since I have given my word just now, I must give you my answer. Of course, space is non-obstructing. What else could it be? But I think space is obstructing, said the Jetsang. What is your reason for daring to make such a presumptuous, presumptuous assertion? In the meanwhile, Milarepa had entered the samadhi of solidifying, solidifying space and replied, Let us see whether space is obstructing or non-obstructing. Now, will you please stand up and move around or stretch your limbs? The scholar then 
tried to move but found he could not do so he had to remain in his original posture unable to even to open his mouth and sat stiffly there like a dead image whereupon the jatsang levit levitated and walked stood lay down and sat in the lotus posture right out in space then he emerged from samadhi and said to the scholar you have maintained that space in this you have maintained that space is non you have mentioned that space is non obstructing but why cannot you move your body this is because you have learned evil spells and black magic from your gurus what happened to me was simply due to your evil mantras and sorceries it is a well known fact recognized by all sentient beings that space is non obstructing milarepa then asked is it true that without conceptualization and rationalization space is regarded by all as non obstructing do the animals also consider space to be so you and your teacher who deem that it is are now refuted by your own experiment all of this may be due to my black magic but the fact that the obstructing nature of the space has been proved to you in quite sufficient is quite sufficient now i shall give you my proposition i declare that the rock in front of you in front of us is non obstructing what is is your reaction to this statement the scholar replied unless you apply your evil mantras and sorceries again the rock cannot be otherwise than obstructing to this the jatsang said in accordance with what you suggested in the beginning that each party may test the other in any subject i now want to test your magic powers for i do not think that you are well versed in this subject now please perform some magic to make the rock in front of us become non obstructing to be able to make magic and to be willing to do so are two quite different things replied the scholar capable of making does not mean being allowed to make only you evil doers play these black magic tricks to cheat others just now you gave me the impression that you seem to know and can do everything said the jatsang what you called forbidden magic is now being performed like rainfall by infinite buddhas throughout the universe loden then said just as space being obstructing a while ago now please demonstrate a spell for making the rock non obstructing whereupon the jatsang entered the samadhi of space exhaustion making the rock permeable and then passed through it from the top to the bottom and from one side to the other also he kept half of his body in the rock and half outside of it then he threw the rock up and let it fall finally he lifted up the rock with his hand and cried to rechungpa bring a pillar rechungpa brought a pillar shaped stone and set it up milrepa then placed the huge rock upon it leaving his hand prints indented on the rock these marks can be seen to this very day the scholar loden then said it seems that you have made the rock non obstructing if this is not delusive magic we we too should be able to pass through the rock now tell us can we also do it the jatsang replied of course if the rock were obstructing should i not then have been killed when it fell the scholar dharlo then said the rock never touched me if there was no rock in the first place what is the use of talking about its non obstructiveness the fact that you did not feel the rock came down come down and crush you is a very proof that it is non obstructing replied the jatsang that you fail to feel a thing does not imply the non existence of that thing now dharlo became even more angry than before but loden began to be uncertain and to waver he thought all this seems to be genuine we skeptical and in- incredulous scholars are always very difficult to convince if these performances are not created by magic but are proofs of his accomplishments of the path i should enquire acquire from him the teachings of the six paramitas he then said will you please tell us how to practice the six paramitas in answer milrepa sang o three great precious refu- refuges sitting on my head as my joy and glory i pray with sincerest heart that you may never leave me i pray you to fold me in your companion compassion i pray that you attend me with kind thoughts i pray you to grant ultimate truth 
to all sentient beings the mahayana yogi hears not the dharma of mere words in the truth of voidness he knows there is no practice so he renounces of himself the ten vices if you parsimony one cannot free oneself what is the use of discussing charity if one does not force for for if one does not forswear hypocrisy and pretense what is the use of keeping discipline if one abjures not malicious revelings what is the use of practicing pretentious patience if one abandons not indifference and inertness what is the use of swearing to be moral if one conquers not the errant thoughts within what is the use of toiling in meditation if one does not see all forms as helpful what is the use of practicing the wisdom if one knows no, knows not the profound teaching of forbidding and allowing what is the use of learning if one knows not the art of talking and rejecting what is the use of speaking on karma causation if one's mind does not accord with dharma what is the use of joining the order if the poisonous snake of klesha is not killed the earning for wisdom only leads to fallacy if venomous venomous jealousy is not overcome one's earning for bodhi mind will be an illusion if one refrains not from hurting people his longing for respect and honor is merely wishful thinking if one cannot conquer ego clinging and prejudice his craving for the equality of dharma only brings wrong views if one cannot subdue the demon clinging ego his kleshas will be great and his yoga bound to fail if one's actions confirm not with the dharma he will always hinder the good deeds of others if one has not yet absorbed his mind in dharma his babbling and prattling will only disturb others mind therefore do not waste your life in words and chatter but try to gain the assurance of no regret and the confidence of facing death well i admit that you have heard of the six parameters commented dharlo dharlo now tell me how should one practice the 10 parameters in answer to this challenge milarepa sang to be continued